Hi, my name's Robin Tudor and I'm the founder of Empower Total Health. And today I want to talk to you about why humans do things that we know are bad for us, like eating junk food, smoking cigarettes, drinking too much booze. It's a pretty simple question, but it's actually one that's occupied the minds of philosophers and researchers, and public health professionals, psychologists, and health practitioners and writers, and, and of course, lots and lots of people, maybe including you, who are really frustrated that they just cannot seem to break bad habits despite having the best of intentions. It's occupied my mind quite a lot too, which you could probably guess if you've read many of my articles. I have a whole section of articles on my website about habit change and what gets in the way of us changing our habits. But at the end of the day, here's what I think it all boils down to. We're going to keep on doing things that we know are bad for us, no matter how much they hurt us, no matter how aware we are that they're hurting us, until we relieve the pain that drove us to do the self-destructive things in the first place. So when I say pain, I mean any kind of pain can drive people to do self-destructive things. The conclusion of, about the, the death of the singer Prince is that he was overusing a prescription painkiller, a synthetic opioid called fentanyl, which he was taking because he had a chronic hip pain. He had an injury in his hip, didn't heal, so he wanted to keep performing and he took the, he, he abused actually fentanyl to the point where he had an overdose. Now this was despite the fact that he was very well known to be a clean living guy who opposed the, the use of drugs and so forth. So that's physical pain. But far more commonly, it's actually psychological pain that's a driving force. It's easy to imagine how someone who's survived childhood sexual abuse or maybe a returned soldier who's haunted by these intrusive memories of, of the horrors of combat that they witnessed and participated in might feel driven to you know seek oblivion in a bottle either of booze or prescription pills or non-prescription pills but many of my clients really can't get a handle on, on how it is that they're pretty common, pretty ordinary life experiences like, you know, having had emotionally unavailable parents, not abusive, just not fully there for you, or being bullied at school, or having a business that failed, or a relationship that, that broke up and broke your heart, or having a sense that they just haven't found their, their path in life. They, they wonder how experiences like this could possibly be related to their compulsive overeating, their smoking, their drinking, their inability to stop binge watching Game of Thrones, go outside for a walk, all these other things that people kind of do compulsively. After all, and this, this is what people say to me, don't bad things happen to, to everyone? And yes, they do. That's life. If you wanted a nice, quiet um, life where, where absolutely nothing bad ever happens, wrong planet, okay? It's the human condition. Stuff goes wrong. But some people, either because they have genetic predispositions or they have particular experiences while they're still in their mother's womb or because of their mum and dad's parenting style or early life events or some other factor or more likely combination of factors that we don't even really understand yet, these people will develop a coping mechanism for, for psychological pain that in some way involves numbing out their feelings, all right? So the emotional pain is so intense, so overwhelming that that they do something to, to numb out. The easiest way to do this, and also the most socially acceptable and the most readily available, especially when you're little and you can't necessarily get your hands on heroin or booze, is, is overeating. And specifically overeating junk food, in many people's case, it's even even it's even overeating calorie dense whole natural foods like dried fruit and nuts, because um, in 22 years of practice, I've got to tell you, I've never found I've never encountered someone who you know guiltily confesses that they overeat alfalfa alpha sprouts, you know, or they get up in the middle of the night and they go to the fridge and they compulsively overeat celery. It just really doesn't happen. So I want to share with you with the client's permission, the experience of one of my clients, I'm going to call her Susanna, that's not her real name. Um, she came to me because she was really concerned about her relationship with food. She felt like food and, and eating was just something that she had no control over. 
And this was really frustrating to her because in every other area of life, like her business and her athletic um, involvements and other things that she does, she's really super successful. And so having this one thing that just really felt out of her control was just really frustrating and annoying and, and disappointing for her. So I taught her to, to use tapping. And in particular, the, the thing that concerned her was how every time she gets in the car, and she spends a lot of time in the car because she part of her work involves driving to client sites. So every time she got in the car, she felt this uncontrollable urge to eat, just have something in her mouth. Now, it's not that she was, you know, going to the drive-thru and munching on cheeseburgers. She eats healthy food. She was just eating too much of it and eating too many of the calorie-dense, energy-dense whole natural foods. She also reported that she felt quite unable to tell when she was hungry and when she had had enough to eat, when she was full and should stop. This is actually a problem that a lot of my clients report to me. I, I think it's very strongly linked to, to this habitual, unconscious use of emotional numbing strategies. So the thing is that we experience our feelings, our emotions, as physical sensations, you know, so we might experience a lump in the throat or tightness in the chest or an ache in the heart or that butterflies in the tummy feeling, they're the physical manifestations of emotions. So it makes sense that if we're chronically blocking our awareness of our emotions, we might end up inadvertently blocking other physical feedback from our bodies as well, like being able to tell when we're hungry and when we're full. So after I taught her EFT, Susanna began to tap every time she noticed that compulsion to stick something in the mouth when she was in the car. The first thing she noticed that was that when she didn't allow herself to eat in these circumstances, so she felt the urge and she said, no, I'm not doing that, this sense of agitation came up. So she tapped on that, that agitation. And then while she was tapping on that, all of these memories of, of childhood experiences, painful experiences, both physically and, and emotionally painful, came flooding into her awareness. And so we picked out one of those to work on in our session together. And I used a form of EFT, which is called matrix re-imprinting. And the idea of this is that uh, people can reprocess their traumatic memories and, and their traumatic experiences in a way that's, that's non-traumatizing. So after we finished, Susanna reported not only that the memory wasn't causing her distress anymore, that she, she could remember what happened, but it was like she saw it in a different way. But the other thing that she noticed was this real surge of excitement that she finally found a way to release herself from, from the past trauma. And as, as she said, you know, previous people that she's spoken to about this have, have emphasized uh, like a, a rational, logical position. And she's a sensible person. She can understand what happened to her in childhood and why, and that there was no malice involved. There, were, there was no bad intent. Uh, there were just experiences that, that happened. It was very, very unfortunate. But the problem is that all of that logic doesn't work on a child, especially a child of the age she was when, when going through many of these traumatic experiences. And so with EFT and matrix re-imprinting, we can kind of bypass the logical, rational adult and go straight to the emotional needs of the child. So um, moral of the story here, I, I've noticed this over and over again. When, when you learn how to use tapping, emotional freedom technique, it actually gives you a tool that allows you to access your emotions and these emotion-laden memories that, that you learn to bury in your early life because at the time you just didn't have the internal resources or the external resources that would enable you to cope with those emotions, that would enable you to handle them in a constructive way. Once you've unearthed those buried emotions, tapping then gives you the, 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 the tool that empowers you to process those emotions and, and when necessary those memories in a really non-threatening way. Whatever you are afraid of feeling, it turns out it isn't so scary anymore because now you know how to handle it. You didn't at the time you were going through it for various reasons, but now you have this tool literally at your fingertips that enables you to handle these emotions. And then that, that scary monster under the bed turns out to be just shadows. It's nothing to be afraid of. So when you're no longer afraid of your own emotions, you just don't experience the need to stifle them, to, to stuff them down with food or with booze or with cigarettes or drugs or compulsively checking your phone or your email or all the other sorts of things that, that people do to, to try to suppress their awareness of uncomfortable feelings that actually end up undermining their health and happiness. But reclaiming your ability to feel, to, to experience the full range of emotions and not be scared of any of them, allows you to live a, a much fuller and, and richer life. And that's really the 
point of paying more attention to your health. It's, it, as I said before, health is the means to an end, not an end in itself. And that end, my, you know, in, in my opinion, should be that, that we get to, to live fuller and richer lives. Right, I hope you found this useful, interesting, stimulating. Uh, please put your comments below or any questions that you have. And uh, if this was useful to you, like it, share it, hand it around to, to your friends. I look forward to catching up with you really soon.